Let's do one more word with Stephen Starr, who is the author of Revolt in Syria, Eyewitness to the Uprising. I want to just find out a little bit more about how you actually managed to live in Syria as an Irishman uh, for the five years that you were there for. Uh, how did you manage to stay out of trouble? Because they don't like reporters there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good, good question. I mean, for the first couple of years, um, I wasn't, I didn't ask for permission to work as a journalist. I did work for a state-run newspaper, um, but I had no official accreditation as a journalist. Um, you know, uh, at one stage I, I went to the, uh, the Ministry for the, of, of Interior uh, as I wanted to leave the country and they said, well, you can't come back in if you leave because you're a journalist. We're after finding out that you've been writing articles about Syria. If you want to come back in, you have to get uh, a visa. So from there on, I, I got a number of visas every couple of months from the Syrian embassy in, in London and that. Eventually, I got a, a year-long um, residence uh, journalist visa, which is good to, to a point, I guess, because um, you know, if you, wherever you go, you, you have this card that says you're a journalist and you, you're, you're marked down as, as, as a journalist. But that's at, problematic as at, well. At the same time, they know exactly uh, where you are. I mean, at one stage, as I write about it in my book, I got a phone call from someone from the security uh, Agency who said, uh, "Where are you? We know where you. You know, we know where you live. Uh, are you at home?" And uh, I said, "Yes." Uh, who is this? He, he never answered, and he said, "Okay, well, I'll see you. See you at your home in 15 minutes." So in 15 minutes was, was their time, basically. And I, I was not living in Damascus at, at this at this stage. I was living in a town outside the city. Um, I mean, you know, well, I just I, hang on, follow up yeah. on that. So what was supposed to happen in 15 minutes? 15 minutes he came to my house for, for an interview. And what happened? He asked me some ridiculous questions about what my mother did, what my father did, um, had I, was I part of a bureau in, in Damascus. Uh, the idea obviously, uh, or I, I think at least, was to, you know, to, for them to let me know uh, that they could reach me in 15 minutes. Did you feel threatened by that visit? Yeah, it was, it was pretty unsettling, yeah. Uh, were you, I mean, did you face anything more vigorous or serious than that kind of intimidation? No, um, not, nothing like that. As I say, I mean, I, I, I traveled on the, the public transportation. I, I didn't hang out with foreigners very much. Um, I was very careful about my kind of daily routine. I would never kind of, you know, until the, until the last couple of weeks, actually, I, I didn't do anything out of the ordinary. Obviously, I saw a lot of demonstrations in that, uh, but a lot of the time they happened just coincidentally, I happened to pass certain areas where these are happening. Did you have to be careful about who you spoke to, lest th they would get in trouble for speaking to a journalist? Be incredibly careful. A couple, I mean, mm -hmm. some interviews took months and months to, to piece together. Um, often I would never speak to the person I was interviewing until I actually sat down. I, I, uh, many times I wouldn't know where exactly was was taking place. Um, and this was my, my greatest fear because I had ingrained myself in, in Syrian society uh, quite deeply and had come to know a lot of, of Syrians. So, I mean, I guess I figured the worst thing that could happen to me is that they would say, well, your, your visa's up and we're putting on your plane and you have to leave the country. But for my Syrian friends and, and colleagues, uh, it's a very different story. They, they, you know, they wouldn't be deported anywhere. I don't want to be macabre about this, but I do want to read a few names here. Gilles Jacquier, French TV reporter. Rémy Oshlik, mm -hmm. photographer. Marie Colvin, Britain's Sunday Times correspondent. Uh, all dead, mm. um, kidnapped, killed. And many more missing right now. That must have influenced how you tried to do business there, did it not? It, it did, I mean, my, I mean, the way I thought about it, I guess, was that I had lived in this country for, at that stage, five years. Um, I didn't interact very much with foreign journalists. And a lot of journalists did get visas to come to Syria, to come to Damascus at least. And I would have loved to have met them. But it just simply wasn't worth the risk. I mean, what they would gain from me and what I would gain from them, it would be nice to have a coffee in that. But they had, been, they had minders around them. I had people watching me, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, it was just too risky to, to, to do so. When did you eventually leave? I left in mid-February 2012, um, yeah. So was there a sort of straw that broke the camel's there was back? A, yes, I visited an area called Sakba in eastern Damascus and saw some pretty horrendous things. Um, we, we, uh, we passed through uh, a number of checkpoints. Uh, five days previously, there had been a huge demonstration protected by uh, members of the Free Syrian Army, and we went there to see what was happening. Uh, we heard it was something about an underground hospital. When we got there, um, it was a very different scene. The rebels had been had been uh, had fled. The regime had shelled and, and bombed the area. Um, I mean, we you know we saw kind of people, civilians were kind of 
walking around in circles, wondering what had happened to their houses. And from the from the public squares, you could see the insides of you could see dishwashers and you know plates and things that you you know you shouldn't see when you're when you're outside. Um, you know the minarets of mosques had been destroyed, and uh, we were taken to see a number of of uh, dead civilians who, and we were told by the people who took us that we can't bury them because if we move them from where they are now, um, the regime will take them and use them and say that, look, this is what the, the insurgents are, are doing, these, these uh, extremist Muslims. Did you have security with you when you traveled around the country? Well, I didn't have security with me, no, I didn't. And I didn't travel that much around the country because for the first reason it was I wasn't allowed. So when I would approach the Ministry for Information and say, well, listen, you're allowing journalists to go to Homs and Endera, they would tell me, well, you're not, you know, you're a resident here. We can't let you do that. Uh, they're just here, the other journalists are just here for a week. Um, but at the same time, I, I kind of, you know, I didn't live in Damascus. I wasn't stuck inside this Damascus bubble that was prevalent at the time. And uh, I did a lot of traveling to a number of other towns outside the, um, outside the capital, outside Damascus, where there were demonstrations. And um, a lot of it, I think, was, was, was routine because on, on Fridays, which was, which was at that time the day the, of demonstrations and when there was most likely to be trouble, I visited some friends and I had done for a long time before the revolution started. So from the very first day, checkpoints were, were put up. They knew who I was. Um, you know, they I generally came at the same time. They, they knew the car. At that stage, I had a car. And, um, you know, they, they knew who I was, so they would, they would wave me through and I would be able to see kind of what was happening in terms of what the, the, the security officers were doing and you know how people were coming out of the mosque and just obviously stand off in tension. Did you ever carry a gun? Did I ever carry a gun? Yeah. No, no. That's a no, no, eh? Absolutely not. No, as, as a journalist, it's, it's, yeah, it's not a good idea. Uh, last question. Do you have any desire to go back? Every day. Every day I want to go back, yeah. It's, it's, it's like there's something called a counterculture shock that makes it very, very difficult to uh, you know, re reorientate myself to, to life in, in, in the West. Um, and I guess obviously there's the issue of being a journalist and, and not being able, not being in country, having had such a kind of being in such a previous privileged position where I was at that time. Um, yeah, and yeah, I mean, it's. I, I hope to go back. I, I don't think it's a good idea to go back until the, the current regime uh, falls. I don't know how difficult or easy it would be to go to get back there uh, when and if that ha when that happens. But um, yeah, my plan is to go back to Middle East. Back, back to the Middle East as, as soon as possible. You're living in Toronto now? Yes. That's a long way from Damascus. It sure is a long In way. so many ways. In so many ways. Yeah. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at tvo.org.